how the hell did you guys pull off the production of the last Tomb Raider? <laughs> um, well, it's it's fun to look back on. It was not always uh, not always easy to live through. So easy to look back on. We have just such a talented group and passionate group of individuals that you can't do it without a team. Thankfully. You, you get these moments of game development where you pull these things off you and, and you're blessed and you feel lucky and it's a moment of magic that you, you savor. That was probably about four years, four years is the last one. And at what point in the process did you feel confident about the game? After it came out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, it was such a big risk, right? You, you know, in some ways, you, you do feel confident uh, that you're making a, making a, making good strides. But you know, you're always wondering what other people think. You know, so you're not making the games for yourselves. I mean, of course, we we make games that we would love to play, but you know, there's millions of people uh, that played the last game, and they're, they're the really ones that judge it. So in a way, you can never get too confident because you're really waiting to hear from the audience. Did the amount of money and effort that it took to make that game surprise you? It's not something you think about day to day, right? In terms of uh, how much is this uh, taking, costing. But certainly the amount of effort is something that, you know, certainly is, is always a surprise. It's always hard, right? To pull off something that is special, I don't think it's ever going to be easy. And I think that's one of the things that is great about Crystal is, is that, that people are willing to say that's not good enough. You know, that's, uh, that's always going to be challenging, that's always going to be difficult, but it's the most rewarding thing when you pull it off. But you were the guy that was actually the point of contact for Square, right? Asking for more resources and everything? Uh, yeah, nothing but good things to say. I mean, we, we, we are blessed with the amount of support we've had and, um, you know, we can't thank uh, Square and all the support um, you know, we had at the time uh, to, to put that game together. You know, it was, was huge. Were you guys kind of waiting to see the sales numbers before you dove into a sequel? Not really, no. I mean, yeah, because we had people uh, finish up, you know, and, and people start rolling off games before they're, they're necessarily on the shelves, right? But we felt good about where we landed, and we felt reasonably satisfied even before it came out. We felt, you know, anxious at the same time. We felt we were in a good spot, so it was enough to go and start planning around and start thinking about what could be the next one. So the big news story when Tomb Raider was released was that Square was expecting to sell 6 million units. And you guys sold super well. You sold 3.4 million units right out of the gate, which everybody saw as a success. I'm just curious what your reaction to that news story that was going around was. Yeah, um, good question. No, I, I think it, it sort of got, got blown up a little bit, um, sort of in, in rec you know, reflection. Uh, I think over time, uh, Square is actually, and, and we as a group have put out um, sort of you know, continual updates on the progress of, of the game and, and we've landed at um, I think last count was, was a while ago but 7.5 million units and, and that is an amazing uh, and a great place to land uh, and that's also been communicated as well by uh, by the group as a whole uh, that we've had good results on, on the game so you know I don't think sort of the, the measure of the success was defined by the first the first month as we've seen the tail of the tape has been over you know 18 months as sort of you know we had a strong start and continue to build momentum from that so we feel we feel satisfied with where it's landed overall yeah it was a weird thing to witness because you guys have one of the most well-known brands in video games you guys critically made an awesome game, and still that headline was like, oh, disappointing sales. And it makes you think, what does a game have to do in the game industry today to knock it out of the park? It's like you guys hit all of the beats that you needed to hit. So I'd imagine that'd be a little bit frustrating on your end. Uh, it was one where, you know, the timing of any statements, you know, and sort of how, how it came about, I think it was one that you know, you want it to feel successful all around. And I guess all I can say to that is, you know, we do feel that. So that's the good news is, is that over time we've gathered the right amount of momentum with the game and it had a good strong start and, and continued to be strong. And I guess to, to your point, when you say, well, what are all the beats you need? We had many of the beats and, and ended up with the right end beat as well uh, of it selling you know, 7.5 million units and, and selling really well over a, a period of time that was you know, more than the initial couple of months. So you had said in interviews before that you're interested in working on new IP after the last reboot. Can you give an update on that front? How are you guys doing with that? 
Well, I've got nothing I can talk to today, unfortunately, because we're focused on making Rise of the Tomb Raider, you know, the, the, the best sequel it can be and, and the best follow-up to, to 2013. But it's always one of those things we kick around is, you know, it'd be nice to do, to do something. Could we do something? Maybe we should do something. But we have such a strong franchise right now. We, we've come off the back of what we feel is, has been a great success with that overall. And we feel just very privileged to be in the position to think about how we take the franchise forward. That's really our focus for now. Has the scope of Rise of the Tomb Raider's production kind of absorbed any of the resources from the new IP project? Um, not necessarily, no. I mean, we, we, we've always had a few things ticking over at Crystal, and, and it's, you know, we will continue. We just had uh, Lara Croft and Temple of Osiris out, for example, but we always have a focus, and I think that's, that's the main thing to say. And uh, a game where of Rise of the Tomb Raider's size and scale, or, or even the last one, uh, and it really is, you know, it's a beast to, to pull these things together. So it takes all of your focus and energy, and, and really that's where, where we're focused right now uh, as, as a studio is, is on Rise of the Tomb Raider and making sure that we bring the best game that we can to market and, and bring it out uh, for the holiday this year. We have stated that, you know, we were looking at some ideas, and I guess when they're ready, we'd love to share them with you, but right now it's all about Tomb Raider. Do you want to talk about the history of Microsoft's involvement with this project? What were those early discussions like? Well, I think I think it's been a long partnership. So the discussions uh, of working with Microsoft have been there since 2008, where we started working with with Xbox. Um, you know, even on Underworld, right? We had a partnership started uh, way back then uh, with some exclusive DLC. Other games after we continued to work with them on. So uh, Guardian of Light was one where we had you know, some of Arcade, and we we worked together on that. That was a uh, you know another fun and, and great success. And then with the, the reboot, obviously we had a working partnership with them too. And so that for us, it actually was sort of a long conversation in a way. You know, it, it was one that was a natural evolution on, uh, on where we started. Can you just describe their role with this project? Uh, well, I think we've mentioned it publicly. I mean, they're there to support and take the game, publish the game, and uh, bring it to market. Really help us achieve what, what we want with Rise of the Tomb Raider to deliver the best game that we can. So they're helping to fund it, and then it's just like a co-publishing deal between Microsoft and Square? How does that work exactly? Um, well, you know, it's, uh, specifics of the deal, I guess I can't really get into. I mean, it's not fair for me to get into and, and can't talk to, but uh, they are uh, publishing the game, as we've mentioned publicly. So is it fair to say that this game wouldn't exist without Microsoft? Is it at that level? I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I think uh, if you look at Tomb Raider, it's been around for 20 years, so uh, I do think the Tomb Raider would still be around. Uh, I think what we look at is how do we bring the best version of Tomb Raider to market, how do we actually uh, make it as prominent as it can be, and there's no doubt that having a first party in, in Xbox alongside saying, we want to help you make this great, we want to push this and get behind it and, uh, and love it in the same way as you guys do, there's only benefits that can come from that. I mean, a, a, just a great example would be uh, you know, just a great sort of tangible one for us as a developer is, you know, after the Gamescom announcement, we, we had a meeting here at Crystal and um, we had a, a, just a, a number of people for, from Xbox come in that were all discipline experts and, you know, they were at the studio taking a look at the game with us, you know, as partners, you know, as a first, first party kind of or second party kind of relationship. I mean, it's, uh, it's one where, you know, they're inside the four walls, they're bringing talent that, that we don't have in, in the studio that has, you know, hardware specific expertise and they're, they're there to help. And, and the first question from, or from, from them is, how can we help? Uh, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And for us, it just felt like, you know, we had this tremendous bench depth that, that, that came on board to come and help us realize what, what we wanted to realize for, for Rise of the Tomb Raider as that next game. Sure. So it's been, been a great partnership so far. And how would you guys word the possibility of it ever coming out on another console? Uh, again, I mean, Phil, Phil Spencer's, I, I think, talked to this quite a lot in the press, so this is uh, no new news at this point, but uh, we, we made it public that, uh, you know, we're focusing on Xbox One, X, Xbox 360 here uh, at Crystal, and, and, and that's what we're focused on right now, and anything beyond, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to it at a later date. What don't people understand about the difficulty of creating a game as ambitious as Rise of the Tomb Raider? I think the sheer complexity of making any one thing come together, you know, on a second by second basis, the amount of effort that goes in is unbelievable. And it's the amount of coordination, it's not just effort. Because we make very experiential games where we try and marry the game design and the fun on the sticks with, you know, an experiential 
flow and a narrative arc culminating all of those things into moments that work and people connect to and feel great when they play is, is incredibly difficult to pull off. And I also think that the, just the craftsmanship and the fidelity that we achieve is, is pretty special at Crystal. We care about the details in an obsessive way probably too obsessive at some point. So really creating something that feels both crafted, but also has scale, uh, I think is a really difficult thing to pull off also. So we, we have this you know, great narrative backbone that you work, you know, you work through, but also in, in the last game, and again, more so in the next game, you have the ability to go off the beaten path and have choice as a player and go explore uh, and go into you know, bigger parts of the world. And to be able to pull off sort of both that tight, narrative and still have the flexibility of choice, I think is, is quite a difficult thing to pull off too. Uh, and that's one of the things we've really tried to, uh, to work on here too. The team is a tremendously talented team and you know, on the next game, Rise of the Tomb Raider is equally ambitious as the last one. And it's less about saying, you know, what is Tomb Raider? And it's more about how do we top what we did last time and chasing that as a goal. And the team's working every day, um, you know, pouring all of our energy and creativity into bringing the best game that we can, to, you know, out with, with Rise of the Tomb Raider. And you guys are feeling confident that you're going to top the last one? I think so. We wouldn't get out of bed in the morning if we didn't think that. <laughs>